for me, power is really not important, but uh, the the ability to feel that yes, I am in control uh, of the situation and not in control over people and circumstances, but yes, uh, in control of the situation and I am able to respond in the most appropriate manner is powerful for me. Hi, Kavita. Welcome to Papa Fuman. Hi, Monica. Thank you for having me here. It's wonderful to get this opportunity to chat with you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, this initiative, through this initiative, we have been having such wonderful conversation with such wonderful women like you. It's an opportunity for us to share your story. I think I am extremely delighted to have you on this conversation. Thank you so much. Truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, so Kavita, if I may ask you, what is that one word that defines you? Positive. Wow. So <laughs> what's the story behind this one word that defines you? Well, uh, I think that's been the core of everything that I do. And uh, I feel that is what gets the best out of me because life is always a roller coaster ride for each one of us. And uh, the one thing that keeps us going is our view of looking at things. So uh, I have always tried and maintained a positive note, a positive way of looking at things, doing things, understanding things. And I think that's made life a lot more easier. And that's helped me in uh, coming to better decisions and doing uh, things in a better way than uh, otherwise. Incredible. So what do you think uh, makes a woman powerful? Well, uh, it's different strokes for different folks. But uh, for me, what makes a woman powerful is uh, definitely the ability to uh, take a step back, uh, being grounded in your values and doing uh, or performing your duties uh, with uh, positivity and faith and uh, believing that, uh, you know, whatever you do, uh, is definitely the best you know at that, that point of time. Power, again, is something which is a feeling. And uh, it's it's a different feeling for everybody. So somebody may feel powerful if, uh, you know, the family listens to you. Somebody may feel powerful only if others listen to you. So it's a very subjective feeling. And uh, for me, power is really not important. But uh, the the ability to feel that, yes, I am in control uh, of the situation and not in control over people and circumstances, but yes, uh, in control of the situation and I am able to respond in the most appropriate manner is powerful for me. Wow. So from here, I kind of want to build a little further uh, so you're saying that power is different for different people. It's it's actually, um, you know, very insightful because we come across so many uh, people who uh, drive inspiration or think they are powerful because they do good work for the society or um, they are contributing in a way, big way or uh, they are becoming an inspiration for so many, you know, other in, uh, aspiring individuals so uh here you're saying that for you powerful is uh, you know kind of not being powerful so that's something i i i really feel inspired because uh thinking about it is a big thing because not everyone thinks uh, about power as something which you can let go of right yes and power is intoxicating mm. and power is many a times can misguide you as well. 
so uh, which is why there is a fine line that whatever we do uh if it comes from a position of following your passion following your vision and not uh as a, a reason to be in a powerful position and there is no power play as such mm-hmm. uh i think uh, that is really important uh mm-hmm. so i can feel very powerful uh, without having to show the strength or the power uh and i think and i appreciate power and beauty uh, which is uh, comes out like that hmm i understand i i i i really appreciate what you said so uh, from here i want to kind of um, understand from you so there is so much talk happening around power nowadays uh, you know w- women need power so do you think it's some somewhere kind of disturbing our ecosystem because we have seen uh women uh, sacrificing we have seen uh women um you know leading those roles where um even if they let go of something still they are contended so what is your take on this well uh, personally uh, this is a very uh, vast and complicated topic to speak about and it it is also very controversial uh therefore uh i really don't know how much i can comment but personally what i feel again i come back to my statement that uh power is not upon imposing your point of view and uh, achieving that because you may think what you think is right may not be right in a larger context so power is not equivalent to uh, uh you know dominating uh situations and uh, controlling situations uh, there is a lot of power even in letting go many a times uh, and uh, i think that internal power is what i look at and i believe that is power when uh, y- you are able to execute things uh, in a way that uh, you know is acceptable to all it right. takes a lot of power to even work in conflict right Absolutely. so that is why we say that it's very easy uh, so a lot of time uh, this concept of women empowerment is not only enlisting your you know uh, uh, that i want this this is the way this is the way this is the way it's o- also about how is it that i am making a difference and what am i adding on what is the value i am adding on so i think it's a, a combination of lot of factors here and it's uh, different in different scenarios uh, yes i completely agree that uh, women should be empowered and the first and foremost thing is the right to education and the right to live a life that they feel happy with when it comes to career so we are educating ourselves that we should have a right to our careers that we should be given equal opportunities all of these things i am completely in agreement with and but when it comes to women empowerment there are a lot of other things also which are misconstrued misinterpreted so um well the list is long so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i understand so uh, you know while growing up did you face any stereotypes or biases being a woman oh yes oh yes <laughs> throughout um because i come from a very uh, uh i would say very progressive parents mm-hmm. but at the same time very non ambitious when it came to me because i was a girl i think their only ambition in life was to get me married oh okay <laughs> i mean uh which is a uh, which is the reason when i say women empowerment you educate a woman you educate the family and mm-hmm. for the women to come in the forefront and express your view is not wrong um so uh throughout while growing up i was uh, uh, i was brought up in a very uh, it is a matriarchal society mm-hmm. but it was male dominated uh, dominated as well um there's no two ways about it you know uh, that in my mind right now when i look back i think a lot would have been different uh, had then been more empowerment at the same time i was not deprived of doing anything what i wanted 
Hmm. So it's a very uh, again, as I told you, uh, if I were to say, uh, was I one of those who was like you know subdued, suppressed? No, I wasn't. But there was just no ambition ingrained hmm. that why don't hmm. you do this? Come on, you can do this, you can do that. No, I. So you know, at that tender age, you always take your parents' words for the face value. Hmm. So everyone spoke about, oh, that one is getting married. and this one is getting married and this one has two children and you know so these are the things which are different right now and speaking about of course a long time back 25 27 years back so now as a mother has it changed of course of course it's changed a lot and i think our entire focus is on how um uh, my daughter will get independent uh and uh, yes but at the same time i must say that again i'm very conscious in uh, we as a family both my husband and me that we've also in you know instilled the values that while you do your education and while you do uh, all that you do it's important that we respect and uh, we also learn to sacrifice if there is a need to uh um, because uh, today's day and age i see a long list of i want this i want this i want this uh and uh, that's uh, really not something which uh, probably gives you the best in life so mm, I, it's a combination i know i i i agree because i do have a daughter so the list doesn't end and uh, there there is peer pressure there is um so much of information available that they you know they would like to have so much with them and so much of consumerism recently yesterday itself yeah. i was reading about um the you know the growth that india is seeing in consumerism it's at times uh, you know it's suffocating also because you see that you, you have everything in life yet you are driven by consumerism and everything the entire landscape is changing and from here uh, you know there is another thing that uh, we as women also uh, you know have a responsibility to understand where to stop how to stop because we are the ones who are taking a lot of decisions right you must be experiencing yes. that and yes. why it is important for us to instill those values and i am I, i really appreciate the way you said that where to let go and what to keep and uh, how to you know, take inspiration from whatever you have and whatever you're seeing i i truly appreciate that and uh, culturally i think we are still stuck at a time that you know whatever the kids do right everyone is taking the credit but if something goes wrong acha mummy ne me sikhaya absolutely absolutely yeah great so what is the biggest highlight of your journey you are also uh you know an md uh, managing a very crucial role uh, you've started communicare and you know i must you know appreciate that coming from a background where you said you had no ambition like ambition was not instilled and how did you you know think of starting something and um what inspired you and what has been your highlight of your entire journey so far so uh i think uh, some people learn are fortunate enough to do higher studies and studies from books mine ha- life has been my biggest teacher and uh, i've been very fortunate and blessed that uh, i get a lot of crossroads uh you know and every crossroad has taught me a thing or two so uh i think i started working very young i've got about 15 years of corporate experience but my biggest uh, curve learning curve happened uh, after the birth of my second daughter amaya and when we realized that she is a child with special needs and uh, i think that is where i dive deep because uh, one of the things which really shakes us up is when something happens to our children or our immediate family and i was definitely jolted by this however again uh, the positive aspect in me uh, took over 
And I said, okay, let me learn more about this and let me see how what best can be done because accepting this is one thing. But yes, if there is somebody who can do something for my child, it's got to be me. And it started as an emotional reason. However, when I used to look around during the multiple doctor visits and I used to, uh, you know, speak with other parents, I also realized that I'm blessed with resource supportive family and the freedom to do things uh, in the way I would like to from my family and uh, I I saw that these very basic things were uh, taken away from many others um, so I think education is extremely important in cases where you have something which is not common like when you are a new mother, you learn a lot of things from your mother, your grandmother or elders in the family. But when you have a situation where, which is very unique, nobody knows what's to, what, what, what is to be done. And I always feel that any doctor, any therapist, they keep changing, but you are the constant and therefore you have to take the right decisions at the right time. When we are taking a decision for somebody else, it becomes all the more tougher. So what's really important is to take a well-informed decision and take responsibility of the decisions that whatever happens, that's the best you knew and what you could do at that point of time. So that was the beginning. And one thing led to another. Uh, I think I've always had a, a huge empathetic side to me. I love children and I could not see the pain that other children were going through. And it, it was like a Pandora's box opening because I then saw so many children with special needs, which probably has not happened or maybe I've not given it. But when you are in that situation, you feel the pain more, you feel the other parents pain more. And that's what led me to this entire journey. And of course, no denying that I was too used to working. So the corporate side of me, uh, you know, I am, uh, uh, my core is uh, the, the core strength areas are operations and training. And I uh, genuinely felt that is a lot needs to be changed in the sector with uh, for the children with special needs. Uh, it's still at a very nascent stage when it comes to an international scenario. Uh, but I always say whatever change you wish to bring about, you need to be that change. Uh, so therefore, I said, whatever my baby steps may be, if it's contributing, if it's adding value, I should do it. It's not been easy at all uh, I agree. because uh, there is a lot of juggle, struggle. And uh, but what is really fulfilling is when I see a smile on the child, when I see development of the child and when I see the comfort in a parent. So I think these are factors which are give me immense satisfaction. And uh, this is my purpose. So that's my journey. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I I understand what you would have gone through and how you would have learned. And I, I must say that it's a big step because uh, one, you um, are doing it for your own child. And second, you're also doing for a community who needs this kind of a care because I think in this segment, there is a lot of confusion uh, in terms of who's the right doctor, are they charging right? Um, are they, uh, so there is a lot of trust deficit if I may ask. So what do you do to ensure that this trust deficit is not there? So what differentiates community care? So a uh, lot of our parents definitely come from a position of mistrust. Uh, but this mistrust is not only because they are not, uh, you know, uh, able to trust a doctor or a therapist. It is a combination. So one is I do know and uh, understand that there are lo there's a lot of good work happening but at the same time uh, the work that is happening when we uh, when we talk about therapy or when we talk about anything to do with a special child it's really important to have your heart in the right place and to do everything that it it needs 
so uh, but there's never a limit to it uh, so here it's a combination also of the parental expectation sometimes the expectations don't match and they are unrealistic so there again it's important for the parent to understand what is possible and to what extent not taking away the the ambition or the the vision that my child will cross this path definitely not but at the same time when uh, there are situations one is what can i do uh and what is the support i get and what is the realistic expectation so i think uh, uh firstly uh, being very very open and transparent about these things uh in terms of expectations being right second is the support that we give and the third most important factor is the love and understanding extended towards a child because when you're working with a child you need to be like a child and the child needs to trust you when the oh. child trusts you that is when we see a lot of change happening and that trust again translates in parental trust so we have a very very gentle non invasive method of doing intervention we want to make sure that the child is enjoying and the parent is being supported well enough so that it translates into an easier journey for the parent and the child that's very very important and to give equal opportunity to this child to explore learn new things give them an environment which is loving and uh, take them into the right learning zone i think that is the biggest differentiator we try and we are diligently doing at communicate lovely so while doing all this or you know throughout your journey did you um, you know get and criticized for anything did you you know and how did you handle criticism i'm sure you would have got such opportunities where there were uh, opinion differences you know that's bound to happen as women you know we get such opportunities more so how do you handle criticism yes so criticism is part of you know any journey that you take and uh, criticism also needs to be constructive uh, for us so again it's the way we are looking at it but i must tell you that definitely there have been moments which have been trying you're constantly thinking it takes you to you know overthink and see so i am somebody who analyzes invest in lot of time in understanding uh the other person's perspective and my perspective and i genuinely uh i must tell you with honesty i see okay if there is something that i have not done uh i try and rectify it and i i have no problem in accepting if there is uh, something which uh, is wrong from my end but at the same time if it is something which is unrealistic i want to make sure that that is conveyed very clearly to the other person so yeah this is all part of uh, you know whenever we are dealing with children we also deal with parents who come from different backgrounds sometimes it's uh, also uh, not intentional but it does you know happen there are spillovers with stress at work stress at home so uh, we try and uh, ask a lot of things to the parents right in the beginning um uh, yeah so these things happen and uh, we try as much as possible i personally try and see how it can be resolved and uh, god willing i mean you know uh, these are things that uh, should not come up we try and learn from every incident so every incident is a learning for us and we say okay we should not do this so it has also helped us evolve as an organization because earlier there used to be bigger you know more mistakes and sometimes some slip overs so these are things which uh, are taken very seriously also as an organization and amongst the team we discuss it and again as i told you uh, we want to make sure that we are not hesitant or defensive in taking accepting our mistakes i think once that is there um, there's always a solution to this yes to it what is love for you love is 
constant and it's also sacrifice uh, sacrificial so love means that uh, it's not always rosy but are you willing to do all that it takes for the person you love or for the thing that you love the work that you love uh for example i love what i'm doing and sometimes it can get very trying and i, I and i say my god is this really meant for me but i love it so when i love it i understand that it comes with its own pros and cons and we have to sail through it yeah what is family for you family is life there's nothing without family it's energy family is power <laughs> that, that's my power when i have my family uh, that's my biggest power my strength i say that in the context of my strength uh yes all this while uh, you, you said you have a you know special child who's needs our special so uh, you you know as a parent you have those uh, you know crests and trough uh, high and low uh, you see modulations happening so uh, what kind of an ecosystem has helped you to evolve as a human as a woman as a human being so i think definitely the first uh, ecosystem that i rely on is my family because uh, nothing comes without that uh, i would say it's been a lear- learning process it's been a journey even for the family so while i take the forefront um it's not just me uh, i couldn't have done any of this without my husband being in the picture my elder daughter being in the picture and now my youngest son also and i heavily rely on them so that's my first ecosystem second thing or i don't know it's a very intertwined thing is my own uh, mental uh, health and my own physical health so uh, that's really very important so having an e- ecosystem which is uh, you know uh, which helps me thrive uh, is very very important uh, i think these are the factors that uh, keep me going yes So do you think uh, the role of indian women has changed significantly in last 10 years <clears throat> okay <laughs> yes it has it has been very empowering but at the same time uh, for many practical purposes it still has not the good thing is the role of the indian men have changed Okay. Uh, i think that is good because uh, initially or you know uh, traditionally indian men their role was to you know go out breadwinner <laughs> yeah breadwinner and come back today it's very encouraging that we have fathers who are doing grocery shopping ironing dressing up the kids going for ptas i have such lovely f- fathers who are the ones who actually come and interact in so i think that is the empowerment that a woman has got today mm-hmm. that she has an equal partner uh and uh, so uh, i i think that's the big difference that i see here uh and so uh that's where i say you know the woman empowerment bit uh, is that we feel empowered when we have that support also it's not just about us but yes the ability for us to go out there and do things all of that has changed so today it's it's a very um, fair and acceptable thing that you know the lady ha- of the house has to go out and work and the ecosystem around has to adjust to it uh so gone are the days but i still do feel there are families who insist okay you know job chhod do and sit at home and uh, bachcho ka khayal rakho and so uh, it's a juggle uh, it depends on your support system but 
by far to answer the question a lot has changed uh, for the better but still a lot more to go yeah that's how we as a country are evolving because yes um you know if everything is perfect right now so there is hardly any scope for improvement i think we are on that positive growth curve so yes that's that's a good sign for all of us to be happy about that's great right. so um i i would like to kind of um, ask you uh, do you feel you know less inspired sometimes and if that happens how do you handle that okay so uh less inspired well there are times that uh i do feel fatigue and a uh, burnout okay because uh sometimes in all of this and all what we are speaking about monica today uh the power of a woman and uh, you know uh that you are the leader and the woman is the fulcrum of the family uh, we women take it too seriously and uh, at the cost of our own health okay uh, so it's not that it is less inspiring for me uh, there are challenging situations but uh, yes i feel low when i don't feel good or i don't feel healthy uh, and sometimes uh, a doctor told me that you know we are like a car but the car needs servicing so if you don't service the car the car will stop there's going to be a halt okay so i think that's something which uh, all of us need to be reminded of and when there are such days yes i i do get into a uh, but for me um, to come out of this is fairly simple uh, i'm a dancer and uh, i wow. believe <laughs> yes i i believe in the power of movement that's therapy therapy for me it's truly therapeutic and definitely i give a lot of importance to my physical fitness and uh, dance does that for me apart from the other things that i do like walking and my zumba and all of that so i really need that one hour to refresh and that does it for me so uh that's that's my shake up time <laughs> you know it's, it's so interesting as founders and as uh, someone who is leading an organization i also get this thing uh, or surprises from other people who ask me in fact females ask me the most uh, that uh, do you feel stressed out i said yeah i do uh, and uh, is this you know how do you handle those moments so i say okay x y z and i also get you know they feel that we are super women you know we are founders and we are ceos so we are super women hum, humko to stress aata nahi hai hum to sab manage kar lete hain and hamari to energy whole day it's like on a different level different plane so you know I, uh, on this platform it's so important whoever is listening to understand that we are also having our low times absolutely i i i think it's the biggest myth that people have you know because we constantly see uh, everyone is like you know has a rush not knowing that you know there could be days which are tough and this you know we have to work on our health our marriage our children every single day of our life uh, these absolutely. are uncompromisable and uh, there have been times or phases where you know work gets so much and something else happens and for me if i am unable to give that time definitely it takes a toll absolutely so, and i think each one of us have our own different ways okay for some it's reading for some it's music for some it's meditation find your way out but do it and that's really important and i also see see a lot of people uh you see a lot of self help gurus and uh, people like that uh, they all actually don't have family you know maybe no children so um it it seems sometimes we say that oh what does he know 
like you know then a priest also gives a counseling about family uh, thing we say inko kya pata hai but i always look at take what you want want exactly take and listen what they are saying and can we do it why are we to judge you know why is he saying this so it is very tough practically you know like everyone advises uh, wake up half an hour earlier my god you should have the energy not to wake up <laughs> half an hour earlier <laughs> <laughs> so it's not easy yes but if you wake up one day and you realize oh my god this is great you can make it a practice and yes. who stands to gain it's just us us so, absolutely um, so i think we if there is a will where there's a will there's a way if we need to really take care of ourselves we just have to snuggle our way through and figure it out and do it i agree i agree as women we have so much to manage and so much to take care of i think uh, yesterday i think i saw some uh, videos where sudha murthy was sharing such yes. an incredible insight she was saying that look uh, you know all these founders here i want to say that uh, we women are more stronger than all of them yes so, yes true, right so in this um, interesting conversation that sudhamurthy was having with the audience and she was uh, saying that we women are more powerful so because we uh, we are managing the most successful person at home so that means we need double the strength to manage them because they want us to be uh, the uh, you know nanny teacher yes. uh, you know the secretary everything you know and then everything comes home stress comes home with the man happiness also comes with him so there's so much that we need to manage so all of us have experienced this right and and uh, yes absolutely and one of the things that probably now it's good to see that the younger generation are a little different but i think we come uh, at least i can speak for myself i come from a generation where we've always underestimated our own abilities so Absolutely. it's like acha aap kar rahe ho to what's the big deal but it mm-hmm. means a lot and again you have the family who's giving you these tiaras of you know super women and this and that sometimes it's also a, a nice way of manipulating and saying aap kar do sab i will just do this <laughs> you know so it's important for us to accept and proclaim i cannot do this this is it i need help so i think indian women have a huge problem asking for help because we think lesser of ourselves and uh, that is something which uh, fortunately is also changing so i would say uh, whichever way and wherever you need help please ask for it because you will not get unless you don't ask absolutely and then uh, from here uh, you know we get another cue to this thing that's making lot of rounds on internet that the art of saying no we should know that yeah right yes because a uh, lot of disease is there because we are not able to say no because somewhere we have that guilt what if i don't do it right we have that and oh, i I, we- i have that problem <laughs> i have that problem a lot <laughs> and uh, i i think uh, that's uh, that is uh, really detrimental in many ways but it's also a strength uh, provided you know what is it that is uh, you know um, taking the better of you uh, that's very important but i i think i am somebody who has had challenges saying no i still have but now i'm learning to say politely <laughs> no but yeah yes yes okay so for i think now comes the last part of our conversation rapid fire oh <laughs> <laughs> i know this something all my speakers kind of get surprised and then they say oh this is this is <laughs> okay so um one word for power gratitude family love freedom 
important life uh, energy success um success mm it's mm, success okay me wow space um space yes space space again is uncompromisable i agree positivity always children precious friends again always always communicate purpose wow thank you so much kavita for this thank incredible you. conversation we love having this conversation with you and um we are there in you know to help you anytime we are there to volunteer for communicare such a nice initiative that you have started uh through this channel i would request all the parents who would like to volunteer for communicare please step forward and let's create a community where we take communicare to all those who need communicare a, a special uh oh uh, you know a special initiative started by kavita kavita one word uh, one line that you would uh, like to say to those parents or those females who need support thank you so much monica for this platform once again and through this platform i'd like to appeal to everybody uh there is a lot of uh it's very very important for us to identify uh if there is a problem in a child and when there is a red flag raise early intervention is the best best way of managing it and therefore please do not hesitate to get your child assessed and do the remedial action that's very important and second thing i would like to appeal on this note to everyone is that we want to create an inclusive society where we are welcoming all kinds of people with different challenges too because they also deserve everything that we are entitled to so therefore let us uh, welcome them and be empathetic to them and they need your friendship and your love more than anything and uh, last but not the least uh i think this is a journey which was uh, started uh to reach out to many children and i cannot do this on my own i'm very grateful monica for having me on this platform and through this uh i do believe that there is a lot of difference uh, that will be made in the society by and large so let us all join together towards making our india a more inclusive india Thank you so Thank much. you so much. Thank you Kavita.